In this video, I'm going to discuss the assumptions underlying the Black-Scholes-Merton model. So I would call these assumptions the Black-Scholes-Merton framework, and we've seen most of them before. So there are no arbitrage opportunities in the market. This model for option prices uses the concept of arbitrage and the fact that we can't find arbitrage in the market to come up with the option price. One can borrow and lend the risk-free rate. One can buy and sell the underlying asset in any quantity, including fractional quantities. Uh, you've seen this when looking at binomial trees. There are no transaction costs, right? There are no transaction costs for buying and selling the underlying. There are no transaction costs for borrowing or lending at the risk-free rate. There are constant interest rates, so interest rates cannot change. It's constant volatility, so volatility cannot change. And there are no dividends. Now, the new assumptions, one, is that trading happens continuously. And so this framework assumes that trading in the underlying assets, say the stock, happens continuously. And this is generally not true. Uh, most stocks are illiquid on the weekend or outside market hours. In fact, most stocks, for example, the market shuts at, say, 4 p.m. in New York, the New York Stock Exchange. One can buy and sell those stocks outside of market hours, but one typically finds that prices are more expensive, meaning the bid-ask spread is larger. Okay, the stock price assumption is a little deeper. And so we're going to take a stock whose price is S, and we're going to assume that over a short period of time, we're calling that delta T, the return of the stock is normally distributed. So the natural log of S delta T, the stock in a little bit of time, divided by S, so that's our log return, is normally distributed, phi is normal distribution, with mean mu delta T and standard deviation sigma squared delta T, where mu is our expected return and sigma is the volatility. Now it follows, we're not going to prove this, but it follows that over a longer period of time, the log return, natural log of ST, so ST, T being sometime in the future, say six months or a year, divided by S, is again normally distributed. The mean is a little different, so it's mu minus sigma squared over two, the quantity times T, and the volatility again is sigma squared T. This is known as a log normal distributed variable. Now the log normal distribution looks like this, where the expectation of the stock at time t is s e to the mu t, and the variance of the stock at time t is s squared e to the 2 mu t times the quantity e to the sigma squared t minus 1. Now those are not formulas that you need to know.